This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Oprah because this is a story that for whatever reason you don't hear in the mainstream even when it went down about a decade ago it didn't get a lot of press not as much press as it would if it was a Catholic priest or some type of Christian or supposed follower of Jesus Christ no and that of course is the allegations that her school in South Africa of child abuse and child molestation and what a surprise right because what follows these people around all over the place death and links to child abuse now one of the things that's important to remember and i've said this many times but if you're new to the channel i will re-emphasize this what's important to remember about these people is that philanthropy is one of the main things that all of these Freemasons, it doesn't matter which or what secret society they're in, whether they're in some witch coven, whether they're a cult, you know, they're flat out Satanists, they are taught to be philanthropists, which means to play the role of a philanthropist. For those of you that don't know, somebody who is a philanthropist uh, is somebody who is very much into giving and, and giving to charities and running their own charities. Right? And that's why you see all these celebrities come out and always talk about their quote-unquote foundation. They all just happen to have foundations set up. They all work with charity. This is how they create this illusion around them that they are good people, that they care about others. Because then they could turn and point at you and say, what do you do? They could say, well, I, I personally have a, a cancer foundation. What have you done? A call for uprising. Or what have you done, anybody out there? This is what I've done with my time. I've given back. I've made all this money and now we give back. It's all part of a sham. People who donate to these foundations, this money does not ever go to curing cancer. This money does not go to stopping child trafficking. If anything, the money goes to help it or just continues to line the elite's pockets. Right? You see them throw these big galas. They look like it cost a million dollars. Oh, we're having this elegant gala for child trafficking. It's like, what did it cost? Two, two million dollars to run this event so all the money that was donated just went to paying off the event and nobody out there asks questions they just go what wonderful people how dare you question these celebrities or these powerful people and what their intentions are it's because they're taught this you know i did heavy research on skull and bones i read a few books about it excuse me about that secret society at yale as well as others at stanford and other you know ivy league schools around the country which really really emphasize to these minor you know these are groups within secret societies right skull and bones is a huge 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 group a very powerful group right but they're, they're you know there's a bit separate than from freemasonry it doesn't mean that the people in skull and bones hadn't gone through freemasonry already or hadn't still become freemasons but they emphasize this they demand it so you see so many celebrities like angelina jolie you know adopting kids in other countries oprah setting up schools all these people, they're setting up schools in other countries. Doing all this stuff. These are all fronts. Just like I talk about the fronts with child daycare centers and how they've always been fronts for trafficking. Why is nobody surprised that these other things are fronts for? You think that the trafficking just goes on in America? These pervs have fetishes for all different sorts of children in third world countries, poverty stricken countries. So this story, which nobody talks about with Oprah Winfrey, is about her school that she funded in South Africa, the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls. And you can, of course, see the logo. They kind of have the O shaped as an arch, right, which is another Masonic symbol, the arch. But you can see the sun behind it, some more sun worship. They always have these signs, these symbols, whether it's pyramid, sun, a phoenix, the all-seeing eye. You know, we always see stuff with their logos. They tell you through their logos. That's why I always emphasize looking at this stuff because you can see it. You can see these foundations that are set up. They're set up and organized by these people. So this story goes that one of the matrons at the facility was facing 13 charges, including indecent assault and inducing underage girls to perform indecent acts. 
Now, this school was said to be a $40 million complex and a gift to four South African girls from Oprah, Oprah, which opened in 2007, which was complete with a yoga studio and beauty salon. So, of course, they're implementing yoga and new age and all of this stuff, which is satanic at the core. A beauty salon. These girls need a beauty salon in South Africa. It's unbelievable, right? She initially had to defend the luxurious complex against certain accusations, but she defended the school in her typical heartwarming style, saying if you're surrounded by beautiful things and wonderful teachers who inspire you, the beauty brings out the beauty in you. Just more regurgitated crap that nobody can even, you know, it's just, it's the same stuff. Chase your dreams. People just say stuff. They don't even know what it means. But several months later, after opening it, a dorm matron was arrested and accused of sexually abusing at least half a dozen seventh and eighth graders. Oprah was reportedly heartbroken. She cried for half an hour. She told reporters in a news conference after the matron's arrest, she accused school officials of covering up the scandal. They told the girls to put on happy faces, Renfrey said. So Oprah, of course, sided against the matron. But if you read between the lines and what ends up happening, it seems like these matrons and these people hired were hired to do this. Because remember, just like these daycare centers, right, they'll – You know, they'll be working with elite secret societies and elite people and high-ranking government officials. And it'll just be some woman, but some woman who has come through, you know, the ranks as a witch or, you know, someone who has groomed children. And they become handlers for these kids and pretty much pimps for these children. So Oprah, of course, says, oh, she was heartbroken. She dismissed the headmistress and promised to clean house at the academy. It says, but less than two years later... The dorm matron's trial was still pending. Several girls were suspended or expelled after accusations that they tried to force other students into sexual relationships with them. And then the original accusations begin to unravel. The next year, Oprah settled with the headmistress. So the headmistress, the one who was accused of all of these, uh, you know, rape or molestation and all that stuff, Oprah settled with her because she was accused accusing Oprah of defamation by suggesting that she knew about the door matron's actions. So Oprah ends up settling and paying this woman off. So it tells you, isn't that guilt right there? The woman, the matron is saying that Oprah knew all along what was going on and what was going on inside these dorms with these matrons. A few months after that, the door matron was acquitted of all charges. Of course she was acquitted. Because sometimes when stuff like this happens, people go, oh, well, it's a fake news story, even that this gets out. You know, if 15 kids come out and say we were molested, they're going to have a hard time not having a trial with these kids having parents and stuff like that, just like McMartin. But what ends up happening? They twist the narrative, they turn the narrative, and what? They always get off. Just like the West Memphis 3 ended up getting their charges reversed. Just like the Oak Hill case, right? Oh, all these kids are just making up stories of being molested. I mean, when I was in eighth grade, the last thing I was thinking about is making up a story about being molested. But they just like to point, you know, make these stories up to twist it. And people go, yeah, you know, kids lie. And at the end, it just gets buried. The matron told reporters that her life had been ruined. She was broke, unemployed, and said she didn't know if she could ever forgive Oprah, who continued to stand by the girl's accusations. The academy continues to operate. Oh, but wait, there's more. There's more. Of course there's more. So not just a school that has these allegations and, of course, the woman gets acquitted. But you also have, in 2011, that a dead newborn was found at Oprah Winfrey School. That must be a coincidence as well, right? Knowing how they operate. Knowing how child sacrifice, child abuse is the key to black magic. Must be a coincidence. So... Children claim of abuse by the matrons. The matrons claim that Oprah knows of the abuse. And then cops probe a body of a dead newborn baby found on the school property a few years later. This all sounds normal, right? This is the kind of stuff going on in schools and academies, right? Just babies popping up dead. People, seventh graders claiming of child abuse. Happened at your public school when you were a kid? It says the baby's body was found in a bag. The 17-year-old girl brought to a hospital where she was being treated for excessive bleeding. And it's some type of scandal because the child brought the bag to school and it's believed that the girl who has not been identified gave birth at the school. That sounds normal, right? 
Now, what do we know about this? Well, we know that when these these women are impregnated by these cults and these covens, when a child is born, the child is immediately ritually sacrificed. If they're not doing an abortion ritual and taking it that way, if they're not grooming the child to be a certain age to be sacrificed or to at least be tested to see if they want the child to actually grow up and become a witch or whatever herself, usually the child, if it's, if its goal is to be born to be sacrificed, when it's born as a newborn, they will sacrifice this child. So that's normal. The girl gave birth to the school. I mean, these are the kinds of stories that come out, right? These are the kinds of things that are connected. We're supposed to believe it's all a coincidence. You get the abuse, you get the a newborn dead baby found at the school, and we're all supposed to just roll our eyes and be like, and there's nothing weird about that. Yeah, to those who aren't awake, those of us who are awake, we know exactly what's going on. It's not a coincidence. You kidding me? So the academy is still open. And what these places likely are, are fronts in other countries. I think they're going down there, Madonna and all these people. Oh, they care so much about all these kids out there. Creating this image of philanthropy and, oh, caring for th- kids in other countries. And everybody just goes, oh, it's normal. Just like Woody Allen, right? With Woody Allen marrying and his own daughter. And it's no big deal. He's still celebrated in Hollywood. What a surprise, right? Now, if you look into Oprah's story, I mean, she's even claimed that she was sexually abused as a nine-year-old. She was raped. And then so does Tyler Perry, right? So what are we, like all this stuff just kind of hinders around these people. They're victims of abuse. And then they're spending time around all these children. And then stories come out at these academies or these places that these people spend a lot of time that there's abuse involved and there's rape involved, but they're not directly connected. Is that a coincidence? Are we supposed to believe that knowing how the occult operates? Knowing that they prey on children? Oprah claiming to be raped at nine. Tyler Perry raped at nine. Then you get, you know, Oprah, Oprah's relations with people like Eckhart Tolle, who pushed the New Age doctrine, which is satanic doctrine. Oprah's connection with Dr. Oz, who was getting people prepared to be chipped and telling them health. You know, they had this guy rolled out for, for years, giving people health advice and people going, oh, he's the best. He's the best at health. He tells us what vitamins. Oh, we should eat kale. Everything's great. Oh, great, Dr. Oz, we all trust him now because he's been doing all And then all of a sudden he goes, you should take the microchip. You won't get sick. It's like a grain of rice. Everybody goes, okay, Dr. Oz, if you say it's safe, I'll take it. Oprah is surrounded, surrounded by all of these things that we see, that we know are agendas that the occult are pushing in, whether it's the microchip, whether it's having her academy down there as child sex, you know, uh, connections and, and child abuse connections. Whether it's the It's Time movement she's behind now, involved in, with women's empowerment. Right? Or Time's Up. I keep saying it's not Time's Up. Apparently Time's Up for men. Sounds like a threat to me, but... This is the stuff that's out there, folks. This is stuff they don't talk about. You know, why is it that we don't hear this stuff? Why don't we say hear stuff about, well, Oprah, there are accusations that, oh, because the woman was acquitted? We're not supposed to think that anything was going on. The woman was claiming that Oprah knew all along what was going on. Oprah even reached a settlement with the woman. And then, of course, the woman gets acquitted, just like all these other Satanists and occultists, because they can get away with this stuff. They always do. These child trafficking rings never get shut down. The stories you always hear, oh, Trump's busting, oh, yeah, oh, sure. They'll bust something that's small, that's for sure, that's not connected to them, because there are pedos and perverts out there that are into this stuff, there's no doubt about it. You don't just have to be a Satanist or a Mason to be some sick perv. Those people will get busted, there's, of course they will, they don't care about them, they're going to protect them. Isolated incidences, because then it shines light on the stereotype they wanted to shine light on. They go, oh man, did you hear about these, uh, you know, this child abuse in this town, this guy, you know, and they show this white trash looking guy who, you know, looks like he is just a, a drunk all the time and a slob and looks like a pervert. He's got a creepy mustache and all that stuff. And people always will then stereotype that. They'll stereotype what a, what a pedophile is or what a pedophile looks like. They won't think Oprah, all these people are involved in this stuff because they don't believe in black magic. They don't believe... And any of this stuff, they think it's not real. And again, the core of their teaching teaches that blood sacrifice, that specifically of a child, 
is the key of black magic, the purest form. And of course, pedophilia with these children and abuse. And this abuse runs rampant. And baby Oprah was abused as a child. Because her, if she was, it's likely that her parents, you know, were involved. And remember, most of these people who are now controllers at some point were abused. And, I, and people always go, well, I feel so bad for them. Well, yeah, but you got to end the vicious cycle. God gave us free will. You know, when these people who have been abused as children become grow up and then they decide they're going to abuse kids themselves, there's a problem there. They need to break free from it, but they don't. And yes, mind control is involved in that, but they don't get a pass. They don't get sympathy in a sense. I mean, I get where some people are coming from, but think about how Hollywood and all this stuff is set up. Most of these people are victims, become the handler, right? Because they're groomed into it. Oprah is just groomed into the system. Tyler Perry groomed into the system. Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, right? All these people who just grow up inside of this system and just become famous overnight. And then you have the other ones from the outside who just kind of become famous and then have death surrounding them, like Kanye West, like Bruno Mars, like uh, Jennifer Hudson. They just become famous and then, oh yeah, my whole ma- mer- family was slaughtered. Bruno Mars, oh yeah, my mother was murdered. Same with Kanye, same with all of them. So there's the two perspectives of born into it, you know, born into these secret societies with parents who are in it, and then these kids are abused, and then they grow up to become the abuser. Then the other side where somehow they get connected to what's going on and find all this stuff out and they want to be a part of it and then they ritually will sacrifice or offer their family members so sometimes they'll just set them up you know to be in a place at a certain time and the so the elites can have the person because remember they control the news they control and have control over the police force and all this stuff and yeah people go that sounds crazy well it's true so i went off topic a bit but this is Oprah. You know, here's a story here you don't hear about. Oprah will be the next president. Oh, it's so wonderful because she had a talk show. Don't mind the fact that she's involved in, a, you know, running a school where child abuse allegations took place. And just because it was acquitted, I mean, give me a break. We're supposed to just think that kids again have come forward and made this stuff up. How many times are we supposed to fall for this act? How many times are we supposed to be told that, oh, yeah, the kids just made the story up? That's just what they tell you every time. Oh, yeah, no, they just made it up. Why would they make it up? What what good would come of it for them? Imagine how embarrassed they are at that age. I mean, remember when we were all in eighth grade, seventh grade, sixth grade? You know, that's like the time, I mean, you're embarrassed to even fart in front of somebody. You know, you're just getting going through puberty, you're learning about girls, you're learning about boys. I mean, everybody's shy. Yeah, the first thing they want to do is come forward and say that this uh, adult... You know, did something I can't even describe to them because they don't even know about sex yet. But that's what they'll always push. So Oprah, of course, has this story that no one will really talk about connected to her, which has never gotten any press. Most people don't know anything about it. And conveniently with the philanthropy, they continue to run these organizations, just like the Clinton Foundation, right? They have these child trafficking organizations, which people go, oh, yeah, it prevents it. Yeah, sure it does. Sure it does. Now, is it a coincidence? I think not. So again, pray for these kids. They're all constantly being preyed on by these people. There's constantly connections to these people. And then, of course, they make themselves the victims a lot of the times. So you would never think that they would be doing it, right? That's how mind control works, folks. That's how they keep you trapped. Philanthropy, making themselves the victims, right? Always the victim. It sounds familiar, like a certain people who like matzo ball soup. Always the victim, always the victim. Always bringing something up. If you bring up something that would uh, be deemed controversial about what they teach, you talk, oh, but we've been poor us. Yep. That's how it always is. People are afraid to go after people. People are afraid to call people out on stuff. Which all you got to do is connect the, connect the dots because they're there for you to see. So this is Oprah with her story of child trafficking, and or not trafficking, child abuse allegations at her school. School's still up and running. Woman's acquitted, but the matron... Of course, saying Oprah knew about it all along. Yeah, must be another one. Quizzing. Just like McMartin, right? Just like Oak Hill, right? Acquit the people, get it, reverse the decisions on these people, let them run free. It's amazing. I thank you for listening to today's show. God bless all of you and your families.